iniquity there is none who does good. God looks down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. Every one of them has turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon God? There they are in great fear where no fear was, for God has scattered the bones of him who encamps against you. You have put them to shame because God has despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When God brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Amen. Hallelujah. David, by the Holy Spirit, describes a reality that he is experiencing in his near but also in his more distant environment and this reality is a great truth not only then when David lived that is at around a thousand BC but also today in 2000 and so AD and this reality is taking place in these latter times even more and more It is the thoughts, it is the question whether there is a God. And what is important is the answer that is given to this question from the heart but also from the spirit of every man. To the question, is there a God? But it's not only that, because the person who answers there is no God, his heart is full of unbelief. But the same exact thing applies because even demons believe that there is a God and he is one, but they tremble. So the same thing applies to every person who to the question, is there a God, he answers, he may be, yes, possibly, but he does not submit because he does not search to find him. He does not seek him. So either man says, there is no God, or he says, there is, but I do not care about this, which means I do not seek him, so he is either an atheist or an unbeliever, which is the same. The Word of God describes this man to us as a fool. He's foolish. He's a fool because he cannot discern the wisdom of God through creation, the wisdom of the Creator. He cannot see the power of the Almighty and he cannot discern the good forbearance, the good providence of God which is love. So when man cannot discern the wisdom of the Creator, the power of the Almighty and the good providence of the good God, then he is a fool. Why? Not because he doesn't understand, but because he's being offered abundantly all the things that God has for himself as he promises to us that all things are for you through his word. They are offered to him abundantly as he makes him an heir and joint heir of Jesus Christ if he seeks him. He is a fool, this man. He's foolish. Where the all-wise God, the almighty God, and the God who is love, 
invites a person so he can give him all the things that are his, so he can offer him himself as God came in the flesh. Man is a fool. He's fo a foolish. When there is an almighty God who gives you the exceedingly greatness of his power so he can work with this in your life, in the life of man. Man is a fool when he does this. Because God says, if someone lacks wisdom, then I will give him wisdom abundantly and richly. I will give him more understanding than the elders. Man is a fool. He's foolish. The person who does not think that God offers his love, himself, because God is love. And so, all these foolish people, all these fools who think, is there a God? The, the scripture says they are corrupt, all of them, and have become abominable before God and men. Their body, their soul, and their spirit is corrupt. They do abominable iniquities before God. <laughs> and there is none of them among them who does what is good. Here, let's pay attention to this thing because atheism is always together with a difference, with, with a corruption of men, and I will go even further, the man becomes a beast. Man who was created in honor and with under, without understanding is made like the animals that are fading. They become a beast and they become corrupted. And other atheism is the cause of the becoming of a beast and of men becoming beasts and corrupted or corruption is the cause for atheism. So either man starts being an unbeliever, an atheist, in other words, he does not care about God. He may say, oh, there is a higher power, but he stops there, theoretically and philosophically. And he, because of his atheism, he is led into corruption and he's made into an animal complete corruption and perversion maybe or he is perverted and he cannot seek the Lord so he is led into atheism because of this but God looks down from heaven because it belongs to God to look upon all the sons of men but God looks down from heaven upon the children of men and what does he see? He sees that there is no one who can seek God on his own unless God helps him, unless God intervenes in his life. We would all be this way unless God had given us grace into our life, had given grace to the human race which he loves and it's his joy and his delight to talk with men we all would have been this way for that reason he wonders the psalmist and he says who will give out of zion salvation to the people of god who will give salvation from zion from the mountain of salvation, from the mountain of the word of God, from the mountain of the glory of God and holiness, who will give salvation to the people of God? And the answer is, when God brings back the captivity of his people, of atheism, of unbelief, of corruption, 
of perversion, of, of, of turning a man into an animal in the end, of the devil, when God brings his people back from captivity, then salvation will come to men, and then, and only then, will man rejoice, and he will be glad. Then, man will be happy, he will be blessed, and joyful. So God is the person, is the one who, who works on the return of man toward him so long as man accepts the calling of God. And here, there are two categories of people. One category is the one who accepts the invitation of God, who seeks God in the end of the day because God provokes him with his work, with his words, with his life, with his works, his marvelous deeds. He opens his mind. He tries to open up his mind. Why? Because his mind is shut. And why is his mind shut? Because being unbelieving, the God of this world, the devil, has blinded their mind so that the light of the gospel cannot shine on them. But God is above Satan. And this is the message of joy, my dear brethren. The message of joy is don't look at the unbelief that is in those people that you love, the ones that you love, the atheism, the resistance to the word of God. This person is captive at this point because of his unbelief, his atheism, his corruption, his perversion, and his iniquity, his transgressions. But look to God. See that above the person who has ensnared him is the Almighty, the All-Wise, and the All-Good God. Above all things is the All-Wise, the Almighty, and the All-Good God. In other words, the gospel is joy, is a gospel of joy. The Word of God is a joyful message for the people of God. The fact that the devil cannot do whatever he wants because Jesus Christ, the sent messenger of God, crushed the head of the devil on the cross of Calvary. And he's vanquished. And since he is vanquished, there is a victor. And the victor is Christ. And Christ is the head of the church. And the power of the church is the Holy Spirit. For that reason, don't worry. Don't be sad. Don't be afraid. Believe in Christ and He will work. Dedicate all the issues of your life to Him and He will act wondrously. The w in the same way that He saved you wondrously and He saved me wondrously, He will save Him and the other and the rest. Because He is all wise, He is almighty, and He is all good. The God which we believe in, which we worship, which we glorify, and which we call upon His name, and we seek Him in our daily life. For that reason, there is a joyful message. The joyful gospel is that which God sends to us, but the Lord Jesus Christ never stops saying, be careful, keep watch, and pray. The three necessary characteristics in the life of man that changes man from a vanquished capture, captive into a triumphant victor. Not only victorious, because the Apostle Paul says, we thank the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who makes us always triumph through Jesus Christ. And I say, in the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of the Scripture. We thank God, my dear brothers and sisters, that even though we are fools, Christ saved us. And we thank God even more because all around us, even though there are fools, Christ will save them. But we must be careful of something. How does God work negatively 
in the life of the people who do not have this faith. The Bible says, God looks down and He sees that all have gone astray. All together they have turned aside. There is no one who does good. No, not one who seeks the Lord. And what does God do? There they feared great fear where no fear was, for God has scattered the bones of them. The believer has one characteristic that distinguishes him, fear of God. The unbelieving has another characteristic that characterizes him, fear and trembling for everything and even there where there is no fear, no reason for fear. So when God will act, He works in us by flooding us with His fear and trembling in our hearts so that God may act in us the will and His work, but to the others, He does the work and trembling of the fear and terror of death, of perdition. And even there where there is no fear, these people fear. This is the tool of God, and this is the message for us today. God's tool for blessing and for growth and glory is the fear of God. God's tool for the return is the lack of the fear of God that is replaced with fear for everything else. They're afraid, they're fear. Just look around you, my dear brethren. People out in the world, atheists, those who, who t admit that they're strong and they don't need anyone, they fear themselves. They fear for their job. They fear, they're afraid of their wife. They're afraid of the cop. They're afraid, they're afraid of everything. They're afraid of earthquakes. Aren't you afraid of earthquakes? Well, we're afraid as well, but we have the fear of God and our hope that God is with us. They fear without having hope. So you understand what the life is. A life like this is hell. They tremble, they fear without having any hope. It is the tool of God on one hand, the fear of God, but it is also something else. It is the tool of man so that he may win over the favor of God. The foolish, the fools, have lost their vision completely in the fear of God. But God loves them. God wants all people to be saved and to return. The people who have accepted Christ have stopped being foolish because the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. But a wisdom that is not earthly, demonic and animalistic, but it is a wisdom that comes from above that brings to man the hope and the confidence and the conviction of everlasting life, of everlasting glory, and of the glory of God. Two peoples, two individuals. One is desperate and terrified. The other is full of hope and full of fear of God. And it depends on us and what of the two categories we will place ourselves, our families, and our church, because this is the starting point of blessing and of curse, and I repeat this. One category of people who are afraid and terrified and desperate, where are you? Afraid, terrified, and desperate, where do you fall? And the other category of men, full of the fear of God, full of the hope of God, full of the presence of God, full of the blessing of God. And God calls us to choose in what state and what category and what path we want to choose and walk in. The, the path of fear and trembling and despair or the path of fear of God, 
of the blessing and of the joy from heaven. It depends on us. And we will see this by the grace of God. Amen.